couple of things. First of all, um, I did bring up at the same time as Pete to actually say what you you putting the man down for actually doing the preparation so as he don't actually fall over and he's got something to offer people in rather than brew something up overnight like it sounds like you've done. Um, so you can't actually knock the man for preparing to be absolutely right for everybody in the way forward. Pat, how, you how can you... You can't knock that at all. And the other thing is, mm. you class my regional dialect yeah. to come across that I'm a thief. No, I didn't say you're a thief. I just said that it sounds common. You insinuated that when you hear me talk, you have to look for your wallet. Well, well, yeah, that, that, that's basically what happens if you've got something in Liverpool or a cop. And you think, think you're going to get on, on in politics if you go around talking about people that you don't even know? Oh, Pat, what would you know? You're common as muck at the end of the day. You, you, you're not the brightest guy. You're a nice guy, but not the brightest. What, I mean, how, well, what have you got... Aside from me. Well, the fact that I've... My, my whole background is totally yeah. different from yours. You're you a job in builder. You don't know my background. I don't know yours. Listen, Thank look, you. Pat, look, if we look at it this way, could you imagine somebody with your accent uh, standing for council? Somebody because first of all, when you found out, you said, eh, couple of things. Do you really think that somebody's going to vote for somebody that says that? Pat, here we have, Pat the Builder is going to stand for council. Right, okay, what have you got to say? Right, couple of things, funding ain't right. It's not going to happen, Pat. And that is where I am different to you. I am a higher class in that sense, where th that is where we are different. People Listen, will vote. We all, like, we all know you love yourself, right? But at the end of the day, right, at the end of the day, what well, you got to understand, yeah? People vote for the person, their policies, their right, manifesto. Right. They don't vote for people like you that slag everybody off. I don't... I think I, they're a cut above everybody. That's else. absolute nonsense. I don't slag everybody off. That's absolute nonsense. I, I don't do that. I've, I've come through and I can see things from... I'll tell you what, I think I've wasted enough breath on you, mate. All right, let's go back to English Pete. He wants to know what your policies are. I've got a couple of suggestions for you, Henry. Yeah. And you're a sort of fella who doesn't mind taking a bit of stick, so you might be able to get away with pushing forward policies like these. Mm. Holiday homes. Have you got any thoughts about holiday homes? Holiday homes, I've got absolutely no problem with them whatsoever. I think that you they're haven't? a good thing. No, absolutely well, I, not. I, I've got a problem with them. They're preventing our young people from getting a foot on the, um, um, on the uh, homes market because they're inflating prices grossly. In Seaview, at the moment, the, um, it's turned into a ghetto, as it does every summer, with all the yachties have been turning up, and I suggest a very good way of um, getting those houses back into the general marketplace so that ordinary people can buy them would be to at least quadruple the um, council tax on them. Yeah, but what's going to happen, Pete, if you do that? What you're saying is you're then, you've got a, a situation where you're trying to lower the price of houses. Um, so, well, anybody, so what you're saying is you wouldn't want your house, I mean, for argument's sake, say you bought your house for 200000 and it's now worth, because these people are moving in and around and they're making the place look good, they're making it look nice, they then increase the price to, for argument's sake, three fifty. That's not a bad thing. That's a good economy. If you've got somewhere like, for argument's sake, Ventnor. Now, I went to Ventnor the other day and... Please don't slag Ventnor off, though. We had a guy in the other day slagging Ventnor off and there are, Henry, some people who are investing a lot of money in Exactly. With, with, with good um, businesses like uh, and some nice hotels. I don't want to get on the wrong side of Ventnor. Exactly. That right, we've got to move on, Pete. Yeah, well, he's not the, quite the man I thought he was. I mean, he hasn't got the bottle to um, pursue a proper hardcore policy that actually might make a difference. So uh, I've got loads of ideas for him, but I'll save them. Have a nice Pete, day. Pete, you'll always be a waster. All right, let's uh, move on to Jeff the Binge Drinker. Hello, Jeff. Hello, guys. How are you doing? All right. All right, mate. Hello, Jeff. All right, mate. How are you doing? All right. How's your truck? Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah, it's all right now. I've got the wheel sorted out. Yeah. Oh. Always, uh, That's an important on. part of being uh, someone who, who who wants to see himself in council. Remember those personal details. Make people feel uncomfortable. You yep. remembered his... Uh, make people feel comfortable. You remembered his I'd, truck. I had, had an accident here. So, Jeff, I've actually got something... Um for, uh, for yourself here. I've actually got a, a policy was a, a bylaw. I'm going to try and push this one through. Uh, an extra taxation for drivers over 55 and under 25 because at the end of the day these people cause most accidents as what you found yesterday. Now you was in a big truck okay for argument's sake if you were driving a Fiesta and that same driver went into your door your kids may not have had a father at the end of the day. Well, what I was thinking about personally is the fact that what if it was a motorcyclist you would have killed him. Everybody. Yep. That's it. Yep. That's right. So would you right. vote, Jeff, would you vote for Henry? Well, that's what I found out for, because I'm, I'm actually on the island, so I can see from the outside view. But 
personally, no, I wouldn't. And this is nothing oh. to cast aspersion on you, Henry, but it's just the way you alienate people. In what sense? Because I could pick up a couple of things from myself here to actually yeah. make things work for myself. Because I've got two years, I've got between now and then, I'm putting a lot of effort into making this happen. Um, wh which buttons of yours have I not pressed? Well, you can't go around, if you want to win votes from people, because votes are scarce. People aren't going to vote in general anyway. They're not bothered. Right, well, I should make people bothered then, shouldn't I? Yeah, that's across the board. So the people who do great, you can't great calling people common. Yeah, but isn't, isn't this... Isn't but isn't this, he being truthful? This is the honesty thing. Well, you, yeah, but honesty never, doesn't work in politics, does it? It never has done. Well, maybe, the, maybe this is where I can change it. Maybe Lorraine, is, Queen of Pan, biggest council state on the Isle of Wight. This is the lady who sits on the throne in Pan. Hello, Lorraine. Hello, Lorraine. I want to know, Alex, this has got to be one of the biggest wind-ups you've ever done. That man standing for council. In 2009, not yet. He said he, he, he phoned me the other day and said, I want to come on your show. Can you give me a little bit of extra time? I said, why don't you come in? He ummed and heard. He was worried about the cameras being here. Very nice yellow shirt, by the way, Henry. Mm -hmm. And uh, goes Van with Houston. the red hair. Van Heusen. Oh, very nice. Um, anyway, um, so he is standing for council in 2009. If he wants to do it, he wants to do it. You're Can we just... me this is not a wind-up. No, of course it's not a wind-up. Actually, Lorraine, before we go on, like I said, I'm on this show Talk today. About, uh, can you just clear up with Lorraine? about her granddaughter and the university challenge thing yeah Lorraine is that true um, and good on her if it is uh, somebody told me I don't know whether this is nonsense somebody told me that apparently that Shana's gonna be on university challenge at some point well the same as you told um, John Giddings that he doesn't like disabled people Henry no I didn't say he didn't like disabled yes, people did. at all. You no, said I didn't. it was a rumor you heard no he didn't no, say I that yes he did he said he had heard a rumor and he said to John Giddings I hope it's only a rumour, it's only something that I've just heard, that John Giddings doesn't like disabled people. Henry, am I telling the truth? Uh, Lorraine, what I he said... it wasn't very rock and roll to it's have... on the television programme with you and John Giddings. Listen, Lorraine, look, rather than just let things fester, I prefer to get these things, it's the truth thing, get things out in the open. Let That's what I heard, so I thought, there's the man, I'll ask him, rather than, you know, you and are. I quashed that rumour, I quashed that rumour. Just like, Lorraine, I'm here, on the show today, I'm ready for your apology. I will not apologise to you, you should apologise to me, because it was over the native red Indians, nothing to do with children. What was the fallout, Lorraine? Because I can't even remember it. It was when I come on and you all took the mic out of me about when I said it was King George the first. His troops, see, they were paid a penny to scalp an Indian, taught the Indians, Native Indians, how to scalp and rape. And you had so many calls in about that, agreeing with me. They'd looked it up on the internet. They'd done everything. What did you say, Henry? Back? I can't remember Henry what the outcome of that. It. But Henry laughed. Henry just laughed at it what i do remember is i was actually being quite nice i was trying to to help the uh, the children you were mentioning the children how they didn't have facility you know children henry y you did you did uh, what how did i mention children that day because this is not a subject i've you know so you tell me how i mentioned children lorraine i'm in my 30s i don't know how old you are but i think i've got a better memory than yourself on well, i don't on... think so henry well, well, uh, it's like you couldn't even remember crying on the uh, radio, and it's like I say, Henry, when you divorce a wife, you got divorced, and then you got married, and then you got divorced. Henry, you've got to be married at least a year before you can get a divorce. Right, a anybody listening to this, uh, Lorraine, I'm going to ask you on air here, uh, the truth thing, let's have the truth. You've been drinking? No, Henry, I haven't. Are you sure? I am absolutely positive. I was up the hospital i can't even walk i can't get down the uh, stairs of if, my flat if you've been drinking hard i have okay, not then Were you probably you drinking hard today, you probably Henry? wouldn't be able to walk would you no it's nothing to do with drink Henry. i think you've been drinking lorraine yeah well you keep thinking that Henry. is that why you think lorraine can't remember yeah i think she can't remember because i a... can remember i've got a brilliant memory lorraine. <laughs> but all i'm saying to you is henry the reason i've found up is Mm -hmm. Where do you, um, you know, where do you want to stand? Hang on a minute. Henry got divorced, and he's not divorced from his Thai, his Thai wife. So why are you saying he can't be married to one and he can't be married to another? Because when he left his last wife... Yeah. Uh, he got a quickie a couple divorce. A mm -hmm. couple of months, he said he was remarried. It wasn't a couple of months, Lorraine. Yeah, but that's not the point, not with then. It's but the when he the married drink. the other bride... Drink. 